uh, Jeff Zettel is going to be talking about something that I, I think I might already do, I'm not really sure, but one of the best apps I've ever downloaded uh, is a free timer, it's called Timeout uh, for Mac, and there's one for PC too, I don't remember the name, but basically what it is is I can set a 30 minute timer on my computer that freezes my computer every 30 minutes and it forces me to take a minute break. And one of the, the things I do is it makes me ask myself, like, am I actually being productive? Am I just heard from Facebook? Did I just spend the last 29 minutes clicking, you know, random crap and I'm just reading social media? Or am I actually doing work? Also, it forces me to get up and stretch. Uh, so when Jesse, he wanted to talk about this topic, I was like, that is super cool. Uh, so without further ado, that Jeff Zettel. Thank you very much. So this afternoon I will be talking about a productivity system that I've recently implemented. But first, I'll talk a little bit about how I got here today. Back in October, I decided I was tired of my corporate job, quit my job, sold off everything, and decided to move here to Thailand on a one-way plane ticket. I turned 27, homeless, jobless, and going <laughs> moving to Thailand. I pretty much got here, and the idea was to, oh, but sunlight is so nice. <laughs> the idea was to come here and just figure out what I wanted to do with myself, figure out who I wanted to be, what I'm passionate about. But I had so many ideas, so many things going on in my head, I didn't know how to best sort them out. So this system pretty much came out of that need in order to sort things out and also be able to know my action steps for the next day, for the next week, for the next few months. It came about that yesterday I was invited by a friend to come here, and I was all excited about it. I'm like, yeah, Nomad Summit, sounds great. I go onto the website, tickets are all sold out. I'm like, dang it, how am I gonna get here? <laughs> so, if, as every entrepreneur knows, the key thing to being successful is providing value. And so what I did was contacted the wonderful organizer, Johnny, and decided to provide some value to all of you by offering a talk. Luckily, there was one speaker position open, and that's how I got here today. <laughs> so the Pomodoro technique, it's pretty much, you set a timer, you work for 25 minutes, and you take a five minute break. You do this three times and then you get a nice long break, a nice half an hour. During your 25 minutes of focused work time, you want to remove your distractions, your Facebook, email, text messages, phone calls. This is a muscle that you have to work on. It is not easy. The first few times you do this, I'm still answering Facebook messages. I'm still answering video calls from my mom saying like, hey honey, how are you doing? I'm worried about you. What are you doing with your life? I don't know, Mom. I'm figuring that out. <laughs> <laughs> the idea behind this is so even people like me who have a million ideas in the head, and I would say I'm probably ADD, just haven't been diagnosed because I don't like going to doctors. But for this, I can work solid for 25 minutes. Any ideas that pop up into my head during that time, I write them down on a side piece of paper. So during my break, I can put those into my system and have all those ideas in line for later as things that I can work on. Free timer online, tomato-timer.com. It's great. I read that out for all the people in the back there because I was sitting back there earlier and I know you don't see anything below this. That's just all gone for you. <laughs> The other key trick is the 25-5 rule. This pretty much came out of something that I used to do years ago uh, when I was working in the corporate America. Ugh. But it was pretty much every, at the beginning of each week, I would set 25 t big tasks that I needed to complete. And every day, I would set out five things that I had to complete that day to feel su successful, to feel productive. And for these things now, I try to define them the week before and define them the night before. This has helped me greatly because when you wake up in the morning and you don't know what you're supposed to work on, you don't know what's, 
what's going to happen today, what you need to work on and do next, you already have a short list. It's not too daunting because my big list is hundreds of freaking items and it scares the crap out of me. But I have this system so I can have just five items. Okay, that, I can accomplish that today. That's something that I can do. It doesn't freak me out. I don't get locked and paralyzed because there's so many things to do and I don't know where to start and I'm just, okay, well, let me watch some more cat videos. <laughs> That'll be entertaining. And if you haven't noticed, I'm going from micro to macro. So we started off small, Pomodoro, 25 minutes, then we go to daily and weekly tasks. Now, big rocks and theme. We're talking about this because every three months I set big, a big theme that I want to work on, the big rocks that I want to accomplish. Every quarter I review my previous ones, see how I did, see where I can tweak them, what I need to continue working on, and then set new ones. We use this to filter all of our ideas through this into our 25 weekly tasks and our five daily tasks. The idea dump. This is the thing that I, I abuse, I use, because my mind is running a million miles a minute. And if I didn't have a place to just throw all my ideas, then they stay stuck in my head in a loop. And it's hard for me to focus on anything. It's hard for me to do anything if I can't get those ideas out of here and just on paper. Then that leaves me, my ADD self, like, okay, I can look at that later. Now I can work on my current project. Don't be shy. Any crazy wild idea you have, put it in your idea dump. You never know when it might prove to be fruitful or something that you need three, six months down the road. And this is something that you can review back against later and see, hey, how, what do I want to create for this next three month theme? What do I want to set up as my next big goals in my life? And you can review through your idea dump and see what looks interesting to you this time. What might have been just an idea six months ago is now something that's kind of interesting. You're like, yeah, it could be profitable doing that. Or that sounds like a fun new hobby to work on. The next big part of this is a weekly review and journaling. So at the end of each week, I review what I did. How did I feel about the week? Did I feel productive? Did I feel successful? Did I feel that I just did monotonous crap and I don't want to do that again? Then I look through what did I do that week and how can I tweak the next week so that I feel a little bit better at the end. So I don't feel like I did the same thing over and over or too much administrative stuff that saps the creativ creativity out of me, that saps my soul away because I'm not being creative. This is something that you just want to write down a very short description of, two to four sentences and tracking this over time will help you design your weeks better and better. I'm a person, I like to live a life by design. I don't like to, I'm, as much as I'm in the flow and just going with it, living a life by design helps me improve my life incrementally over time. Otherwise, I was just doing the same boring crap and for years, I am successful in the sense I had a good job and made good money, had great benefits, but I didn't feel any better. I was probably about 30 pounds more than I am now, and I wasn't really improving myself. So I found that doing weekly reviews of what I did that week helps me design my life a little bit better each day or each week. So this all comes together in a wonderful free, free program that I found online. That's my favorite price, actually. Um, it's pretty much, I use it as digital sticky notes. So I used to have sticky notes just on my walls and all over my computer and on the side case of my computer. But the issue with that is sticky notes lose stickiness. <laughs> so they start falling off after a couple of months. And I'm like, no, that idea still needs to stay there. I haven't quite accomplished that. I haven't gotten to that yet. So this is a digital version of pretty much sticky notes that you can organize into lists. Yes, there are a million other features to this program. You can use it for calendaring. You can use it to upload files. You can have massive descriptions. People use this for project management and all that stuff. Let's just not complicate things. Let's just have simple sticky notes, simple light items. It's cloud-based and shareable with a team. 
So all you entrepreneurs building your wonderful, great teams that will help make you successful, you can use this application in order to do so and share it with whoever around the world. So this is, I'm going to show you pretty much what it looks like in Trello. So I have my idea dump, my raw ideas. I just write everything down. Right here I have an article that I want to write about, about waking up depressed. That seems like something that people will do. Write an article about keeping the undercarriage clean. Write an article about what I learned quitting my job and moving to Thailand. Write a book chronicling the life of James Pantano, a mafia rock star, which came from a dream that I had a few weeks ago. <laughs> Pretty much I had this dream and I dreamed up a whole lifetime. And then I was this character going back and figuring out who was this great rock star that he fell in love with his music, but the rock star had died. Kind of like Kurt Cobain was to me, who I fell in love with his music years after he had already died. So I just dump everything in there. But then here's my big rocks. My theme for these three months is the poetry spray. So it's just trying to get as much poetry out that I can do, create as much poetry, create a poetry book and publish it, and also work on another book that I'm writing. Then scheduling content for my websites and five new audiences, writing guest blog posts for other websites. And the nice thing about this is you can use labels. So I have green for my publishing. I have red for my writing. I have yellow for my website administrative work. I have blue, is that blue? Yeah, that's blue, uh, for writing guest blog articles. And then I filter these raw ideas through my big rocks to get what I'm doing this week. So I have a few writing goals. This one ties in with a first draft. This article ties in with content, one post per week for Jeff Raj. This is administrative crap because, well, you gotta get your content edited. Um, this is website junk. And then this is publishing stuff. I need to get my poetry book on Amazon. I've been lazy about that. I got it published, I have it all created, I just haven't done it on Amazon. It's supposed to be five or 10 minutes, but I haven't done it. So that's on my week of things to do. Then today I have also an education label. So the big thing for me is constantly maintaining my education. I didn't really go to college because it wasn't a degree that, re that what I wanted to do in life required. So college for me was very boring. I couldn't fathom paying the thousands of dollars in student loans when I couldn't figure out what the degree would be used for in my life. But I still value education highly, and so I'm constantly reading. My goal this year is to read 48 books. So this one is one on book launch that a buddy of mine recently wrote, and I'm like, all right, cool. So that's all my things to do today. I have to write 750 words for a book that I'm working on. I need to schedule some uh, emails that I need to send out. I need to transcribe and schedule some poems out of my notebook. And then this is for my current Pomodoro. So I take whatever I'm working on and I drag it into here. And then I click my timer and I start working on it. Once I hit 25 minutes, I take a break. What do you do in the five minute break? You stretch, you move. We're digital nomads, we're hunched over a computer all the time. That is not healthy for us. That's how we get short, soul sh uh, sore shoulders and backs. That's how we get a little pudgy around the sides. It sure happened to me quite a few times. So during those breaks, I'm constantly trying to get up and move, trying to stretch, trying to go do something other than sitting at my computer. It gives me a chance to break away. Then on the long 30 minute break, I take that opportunity to answer little emails or answer messages that I've received over the past hour and a half that I've tried to ignore. Then once you're done with your current Pomodoro, you can drag it all the way over to done. And this you track for the entire week. So at the end of the week when you're writing your quick little journal about what, what you did, what worked for you, you have a catalog of everything that you completed. And they're all labeled too. So was it educational? A lot of education that week? Did you feel good because of that? Was it because you were being creative in writing? 
Was it because you're doing administrative website stuff and the filled up your whole done column and you're like, man, I didn't feel like I served my soul this week because I didn't have enough writing or I didn't have enough education in there. Then you have this waiting on column as well. The big thing about the waiting on column is it's where you put everything that you've delegated and outsourced. As entrepreneurs, we cannot do everything ourselves. We have a team for that. That's how we get to be successful. So we drag all the stuff over at the end of the week, look it over, journal about it, and then archive it. Clean it all up, fill up this week's 25 new things, Take from here, go into the today's five things, and start the next week fresh. I wanted to thank my wonderful friend, Zach Bowles, who brought these ideas to life and is a great business coach. He's one that helped take me a lot of these ideas that I've implemented in my life and bring them into one complete system. ZachBowles.com. If you'd like, you can contact me at jzettle at gmail.com. And if you're curious, you can read my musings. I have jeffraj.com for my spiritual writing and life coaching. And I have jackwonka.com for my twisted poetry and short stories. Thank you. There you have the pleasure of being here at QA, and our next speaker is actually Johnny. <laughs> All right, any questions? Yes. Well, I actually schedule for myself uh, when I'm working on my writing. So I have two to three hour block um, in the mornings that I always show up at my desk. And so it's, that's when my muse knows to show up for my writing. Um, what I learned a long time ago was in order to feel that confident in calling myself a writer, I have to write every day. And in order to be a professional, you have to show up at the same time every day so that that creative spirit knows that, oh, they're showing up here and I can come. I get random you know, times that they come in, but most of the time I just have a little notebook and I'm journaling in that. But that normally happens when I'm out at a bar or something like that and booze helps. <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. I'm just wondering how you estimate the time it would take. You have uh, try and do five tasks a day. Just for example, to me, I try and do one task a day to take about three weeks. <laughs> so. What for me, the big thing about it was, was I used to not complete five tasks a day because I wasn't using the Pomodoro technique. I wasn't blocking out all my distractions and just focusing on it. So what I found was using that technique, I'm actually saving time. So instead of spending half of a day thinking about the task and idly working on it at the site, you're reading a new Huffington uh, post article or your friend messages you and you chat with them and especially because we're digital nomads We have friends from all over the world and family that's not here So we oftentimes value speaking to them whenever they reach out to us But for me, it's creating that environment where I know that I'm working So I found that getting five tasks done is fairly Easy for me when I'm actually diligent about this is what I'm doing right now when it's as a uh, esoteric and just kind of out there in the ethers, it, five tasks can take me three weeks. So that's the big thing for me. Any other questions? Yes? How do you decide uh, what task uh, uh, do you first? I mean, do you go for the heavy task at the beginning or you let uh, for the end of the day? How yeah, so I'm a big believer in eating that frog as soon as you wake up. Um, I don't know if any of you have read that book, but the idea is pretty much you take the grossest, nastiest thing, the thing that your stomach just hates, you want to run away from and just like drink all day instead, you do that first. Because once that's done, everything else is easy. And so the next four tasks just flow so much easier because you've already accomplished something that is big. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.